Hi, I'm here with uh, Alex Honor, and he's going to give me a quick tour of the new Rundeck 2.0. Alex, uh, what do we got? Yeah, this is it. Um, Rundeck 2.0. So we really tried to focus on the user experience here, thinking about the guy who's uh, running the job. So we tried to simplify things, um, give them a little bit more information and context. And you're actually looking at something new here in Rundeck 2, which is a project page. This was something a lot of users were asking for. They've got numbers of projects and um, in Rundeck 1 you just get a menu of their names, but they wanted to supply information that their users could um, use. Maybe it's docs or links to other tools. So we added that here. This is a little um, readme MD file kind of inspired from GitHub. You can put a markdown file in here and I didn't put much, but you can uh, basically uh, give a little bit of uh, user info about what this project is for. And you see a little bit of execution summary here. Right. Um, this is uh, our first kind of pass at giving you some metrics about what's going on in the projects. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this project called Simple and show you some other new things. Uh, of course, uh, you recognize this list of jobs and groups. Um, as well as views to uh, different activities. So if you want to know what's running, you can press that or what's been done in the past or failed and so on and get a, a view of history across all the jobs in this project. And, uh, and you may recognize this uh, tab here, nodes. This is information about your, your hosts or services that you have out there that you're managing. And um, you can see, first of all, we've got this new filter. Um, you can always search um, nodes by tags in Rundeck, but uh, now you can do it also by attributes. And this is something people have really been asking about. And you can actually combine these things. So I could say tags, app, and use some regular expressions, and um, it happens to match the same nodes here. But you can combine these things. And this gives a lot more flexibility about um, you know when you're trying to navigate your nodes. So, that's a pretty exciting new feature. Yeah, um, from cool. here, you can actually um, do a number of things. Run a command on these nodes or create a job for these nodes, which brings up another an addition here, and that's commands tab. We used to have a tab that combined looking at nodes and running commands. And a lot of users uh, didn't like that because uh, only a subset of users uh, typically would run an ad hoc command. So for example, I've got this uh, safe filter, some nodes here. These are the app nodes. I can run a command like this. Of course, it's an innocuous command. Um, I'll try to write, spell it right. Who am I? Um, but uh, now, you know, you, we isolated this functionality in its own page and made it more um, suitable for the people that need to run ad hoc commands. So, for example, they might want to control threading or continue or stop if, if an error occurs. So, so now, Alex, this, so, is all, um, this, is, this is all controlled by the access controls, right? So if you know, this could be reserved for the power users while the average person you want to give uh, some kind of self-service to could just run the jobs that they have the permissions to see, correct? Yeah, of course, yeah. And um, like I said, not everybody um, would be able to uh, access this this functionality. It's another reason that we thought it was a good idea to just kind of put it in its own page. Um, that leaves this nodes page more just navigating your data, uh, searching data about uh, what's out there in your infrastructure, um, and leave commands more to the, the work of, of executing ad hoc actions. You know, a lot of people are using this, um, this ad hoc command functionality to do investigative work. You know, something might be funny out there in the environment and they're going to run some system commands to try to figure that out. Maybe some PSs, some net stats, who knows what they're doing. And, uh, and so they rely on that ability of, of uh, sending out actions like that and collecting data. So um, kind of a new thing, but uh, based on old functionality. So it's uh, hopefully a lot Great. easier to use as well. Um, here we have the activity page. Uh, this is basically just a search to everything that's been done through Rendic. Um, not too much has changed here, really, in, in 2.0. Uh, we've got plans for that, though, in upcoming releases. So um, and then lastly, here's the configure page. We did 
uh, some work in here trying to make things uh, more user friendly for the uh, Rundeck admins. Um, basically managing the configuration of the project uh, we streamlined um, and oops, I go back over there and uh, things like this you know for example how do you configure your run deck um, of course it's documented but a lot of times people just want to know what are the key configuration values they really need to worry about so these are basically placeholders we're displaying this data um, in upcoming releases you'll be able to modify this data through the interface as well um, likewise for security, you know, how are you logging in, and um, system info. So if you're running Rundeck like a service, a lot of times you want to get this info through the API, but here it is displayed in, in graphical form. So that's it for, ter you know, in terms of the top level navigation of, of Rundeck, it's, it's the Rundeck you know, um, and we've kind of souped up the interface so it's easier to use. Um, I think it looks a, a lot more presentable now than, than the, the 1.x versions of Rundeck. Yeah, it looks great. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Alex, and uh, look forward to doing some more of these videos and digging in deeper into Rundeck 2.0.